difficult to succeed. You need three things to have a breakthrough. You need, number one, most people see as number one, is a strategy. So let's say, for example, somebody is massively overweight and they really decide they want to change and it hasn't worked before, what do they do? They look for a diet or an exercise plan, a strategy. Most people are not doing well, they want a strategy. Now, I'm a strategist, that's what I do for a living, meaning I know the right business strategy could save you decades and days. That's my goal when I do a weekend program. How do I give people decades of value in a few days? How do I compress time for them? Because that's what I've done with my life, that's why I'm here. I've done it by learning from people that have already done it, got the results, they have to remake it all or make it up all myself. Well, guess what? Strategy is invaluable, but if you try it first, it rarely works. And the reason is because in these cases, they both hit a threshold. They didn't say it exactly, but if you listened, they got to a point where change had to happen now. Is that true? Yeah. Is that true for you as well? And so usually what that did, and how many of you pain is what finally made you deal with this? Like it got so painful, you said, not another day, not another hour, I'm dealing with this shit right now. Who can relate to this right now? Say, I. Ah. Now you don't have pain, you can also do it out of pure excitement and pleasure, but most people, necessity drives them. So just make a note, you know, crisis equals breakthroughs. If you use the crisis, you'll create a breakthrough. Now your industry is far from a crisis, but it probably feels like it by contrast. But you just means you gotta do something differently. You gotta shift. And usually when you do that, you end up having benefits you don't even know. Like I never would have my daughter right now unless it was COVID because I was always traveling. I wouldn't be able to reach as many people. I wouldn't have as much impact. But it only happened because it was demanded or I'd give up and I don't give up. How many follow this? Say I. I. So strategy is great, but you don't get the strategy first. Like, you know, 70% of America is overweight. So it's the fattest country in the history of the world. How is that possible? Is it because what it takes to be fit and strong is incredibly complex? Is that why? No. No. Is it because the information is only available to the 1% and no one else has access? No. no. If you wanted to go work out and you're here in this city and you've never been here before, how far would you have to go to get someone to help you work out? How far? Not far at all. There's a gym within three, four, five, ten miles. Of course, you'll probably drive there instead of walk there, but we understand. And you could download books right now where you're sitting in this chair. You can hire a trainer to come see you. So it's not complex, it's not expensive. You have to kind of avoid the information it takes to be fit and strong. It's everywhere, true or false? So it's really not a strategy problem in most cases. Sometimes it is, but in most cases, strategy comes later. And when you start with strategy, have you ever helped somebody to have a problem and you say, oh, I know what to do, and you show them what to do and they don't do it? and then you try to help them some more and they still don't do it. Who's ever done this before? Knows what I'm talking about. Because you were showing them the strategy. The strategy is critical, but if you start with strategy, it doesn't work because the real problem usually is the story. And that's one of the reasons I came by today out of respect and love for who you are as people. I don't know you individually, but I know we're brothers and sisters on the path because you're all willing to bet on yourselves. And I know you're in a situation that will feel uncomfortable when suddenly the game changes so radically in 120 days. But it's not changed so radically you can't succeed unless you get it in your head otherwise. The story is nothing but a set of beliefs you tell yourself over and over again. So when people, for example, are overweight, what's the story they have? I've tried what? What do they say? I've tried what? Everything. Bullshit. If you tried everything, you'd be fit and strong. Exactly. <laughs> tell me what you tried. I've tried millions of things. Really? Name them. Well, I've tried thousands of things. Name it. Well, I did do these three stupid things that don't work over and over again. That's people's idea of I tried everything. So what happens is even though they have a strategy in front of them, they don't do it because the story makes them not execute. The story makes them uncertain, remember that? So then they don't use their full potential because they don't want to be disappointed again and not lose weight. And so then they don't take enough action or quality of action and then they get lousy results and they go see. And now they're on the downward spiral. So the way you transform your life is you don't start with the strategy even though it's sexy. Like, I would have rather come here today, quite frankly, if we had more time, and taught you some really cool strategies to blow your mind, because it makes me really look good and I enjoy doing it. But I knew what I needed to do today is give you some fundamentals on the most important thing, which is your state and your story, and a little bit on strategy. Does this make sense? Because if you've got the right story, you're empowered, you're gonna figure out the strategy. You're gonna either find it or you're gonna create it yourself. Who knows what I'm talking about? Who's done this before? Say, I. I. So, Changing your story, write this down, divorce your story of limitation and marry the truth of your unlimited capacity. Divorce the story of your limitations. 
If you have a real divorce, you shouldn't visit with the person on a regular basis. Get it out of your life and marry the truth of what you're really capable of. So one thing you gotta look at is when you fail to achieve something, there's usually a belief behind it. And you gotta take that belief and destroy it. Say, what's bullshit about this? Just take it apart. For time's sake, that's all I'll say right now. Your story controls you. If your story is I'm having a love affair, your, everything in your life is affected by that story. If your story is, oh my God, my industry's upside down, then your whole life will be affected by that story. If your story is I was abused as a kid and you keep that story, then you're gonna have nothing work in your life because it'll always be that. Change your story, write it down, change your life. It's literally that simple. So you gotta decide what's gonna be the story for your business, for your customers, for yourself, for the people you lead or manage, if you've got a team of people. The story's everything. And the story though, is controlled or shaped by the state. Those are the three S's for a breakthrough. Your state, which is what I, since I only had a little bit of time today, we focused a bit on. How many feel better right now than we started? Right now, here, even hours later, say I. I. It's because we worked hard in changing your state. How do we do it? Well, when you're in a great state, you come up with a better story. When you're in a lousy, low energy state, your brain will always come up with a lousy story, and then you'll try a, try a strategy or you'll say, oh, I've tried that before. Well, yeah, trying it is not the same as owning it and living it. So if you want to change your state, I just want to show you what we've done explicitly today really quickly. To change your state or in someone else's state, you've got to change your own first. And there's only a couple ways to do it. How have we done it today? How have we changed your state? Two ways primarily today. Jot them down. Number one, we got you to change your focus. Focus, write down focus equals feeling. Remember we said where focus goes, energy flows. So your focus has a huge impact on what's happening in your life. I went to racing school years ago, and I remember the first thing I did when I was racing school, I got to work with this guy who was extraordinary. And he goes, Tony, before we start the school, I'm gonna take you in a car and show you what a race car is capable of doing. I said, awesome. I get in the passenger seat, lock myself in, he gets in the seat, takes me a ride I still will never forget. We're at a place like Laguna Seca in California, it's a racetrack there where they have this corkscrew where you go 120, well, most people go 120, you went 120 miles an hour straight at this wall and it goes around the thing. I mean, I thought I was gonna die for sure. And at the end, he says to me, Tony, he goes, was that crazy? I said, that was insane. He goes, in four days, you'll be doing that. I said, I'm a really positive guy and you're full of shit. <laughs> I said, I don't even know if I wanna do this now after this. I'm pretty crazy, but that's crazy shit. He goes, I know, Tony, it feels crazy because you're not in control. You don't know what to do. So let me tell you what we're gonna do with you, and it's a perfect metaphor for life. He goes, we're gonna first put you in a spin car. I said, what's a spin car? He said, it's a car, you're gonna be driving, I don't need brakes, I can't control it, but I have these four buttons down here beside me. And we're gonna race around this track over and over again, and there's gonna be a moment when you lose concentration. I don't care how much you work at it, that's what this racing is, you people sweating, it's the concentration, it's the muscular tension, focusing that does that, going at that speed. And he goes, and when you lose that concentration, I'll push one of these four buttons, and whichever one I pick lifts up one of the four wheels. And we will spin out of control in that direction. And he sees over there, that's the wall. If we hit the wall, one of two things happens. In the best case, you wreck the car and you pay for it. In the worst case, we get injured or die. He goes, this is, everything's on the line, so I'm gonna tell you what it takes so you don't hit the wall. It's really simple. Focus on where you wanna go, not on what you fear. I'm like, Oh shit, I know, I teach this shit, no problem. <laughs> this is easy. Because whenever you focus, that's where you go. If you ever heard about a person in a Porsche on a country road driving, you know, 100 miles an hour, and there's only one telephone every quarter of a pole, a quarter of a mile away, and they hit the damn pole. How does that happen? Because they start moving out of control, and they go, oh my God, I don't want to hit the pole. And whatever you focus on, you steer into. So I understand the principle, and I thought, this is a really good metaphor for life. By the way, we get in the car, we're driving 110, 120, I'm focusing, I'm focusing. Does life push the button when you're ready for it, yes or no? No, life never pushes the button, and he doesn't push it when you're ready for it. He watch, watches, there's a moment of lose concentration, we start spinning out of control, what do I do? I look straight at the wall. Ah! He saves my life by grabbing my face and physically forcing it this direction, where we're supposed to turn to the left. And when he does this, I'm still thinking, I'm fighting him, because I want to see the death happen. You know? so, <laughs> But he can't hold my face, and so unconsciously what you do is you steer where you're looking. And so, by the way, you instantly turn when you're going that fast. When you've been going a certain way in your life, for a certain period of time, you instantly turn, does that work? No, you have momentum. And so, I'm doing the right thing, but I'm not being rewarded. That's the hard part in life. 
you need this F word called faith, <laughs> right? Because I hang on, hang on, and sure enough, a few seconds before the wall, it catches and we miss the wall. My heart's beating out of my chest, and I think it's six inches, but I'm a man at three feet, you understand. The bottom line is, he says, he says, did you learn? I go, I learned, I learned shit. We went and did it again, first time, I, I go, go, go. Push the button, I'm looking straight at the wall. Grabs, but after four or five times, your nervous system starts going, mm -hmm. And even though you're not going the right direction, you keep focusing here. And sure enough, you make it, you make it, you make it, you make it. You develop more confidence. And then you go faster and you do more. And then you can use this machine called your business or your life on a whole different level. 